Hello. Do you remember a time where we could still go places and do things? When you could just hop into your car and venture out into the great unknown? Perhaps it was going to a friend's house for a party for the very first time. Maybe it was going to a new restaurant that opened three towns over because you were that desperate to try something new. Or maybe you accidentally st stole a mug from the teacher's lounge when you, it was clearly labeled as public property, but apparently it was private and nobody wanted it taken. To get to those places, you'd probably need to use a map. Nowadays, maps are extremely common, and we probably use them every day even if you don't realize it. They can be found on our cell phones, in our fire exits, or in the back seat of that one uncle's car, even though you're pretty sure you've never seen him actually use it. In this episode today, we're going to talk about a brief history of maps, how we've used them, and how they've influenced human development. I'm Mr. Thompson, this is Cedric Deskull, and you're watching Low Budget History. Depending on the budget, this section may or may not have an intro. Back in the olden days, before the written word, or MySpace, people used to make maps out of just about everything. Grass, sticks, rocks, erasable expo markers, whatever they could get their hands on. The maps they made tend to be very crude as well, two-dimensional, with exaggerated proportions, and just totally made-up features. It wasn't until around 500 BCE, sorry Christ, did people start figuring out what the planet really looked like from an overhead perspective. Now, since these people did not have flight, satellite, or the benefit of being really, 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 really tall, there was a lot of artistic interpretation when it came to map making, or as we would call it today, guessing. Let's take a look at the, a few of these maps and see how far we've come as a species. Here are a couple of famous maps found throughout history. The first one we're looking at is the Ptolemy map. This comes from ancient Greece. I'd rate this one 8 out of 10. It's one of the first maps made by mankind, and I think it's a pretty good first attempt. You can either see some roads and rivers in there. A bit crude, but hey, given the technology at the time, good job, Ptolemy. This is the Tabla, Rodriana. Uh, I'd say it's still pretty good, all things considered. This one was more from the medieval era. Uh, comes from the Middle East, so that's why the Middle East seems to have the central focus here. We see a lot more small river valleys. Nice little trees here and there. Though we still have some disproportionate rivers and some really weird coastlines. Also, instead of a boot, Italy seems to be shaped like an elephant. Here you have one by Henrik Bunting. Disclaimer, this map was not to, meant to be an accurate representation of the Earth. It was more of a representation of the Christian worldview of it. That being said, 2 out of 10, that's not the Earth, that's a flower. And here we have the Mercator projection. Nice shape, has all the continents, even New Zealand, and it is not a flower. 9 out of 10. This is one of the latest designs in map making, and in fact, the map that we still use today in classrooms, textbooks, and child place maps. But even in these more modern, accurate maps, we still have some problems. For instance, if you look at your standard American classroom map, you can first see that, one, it's a bit outdated. We have countries on here that no longer exist. Two, you can see we have some problems with proportion. Canada appears much bigger than it actually is. South America, Australia, and New Zealand appear very small. And Antarctica seems to stretch around the entire world, while the North Pole doesn't really seem to be there at all. Even places like Greenland appear so big they seem to be about the size of Africa, when in reality, they should be about the size of Greenland. Why is this? Is this the result of racist map making? of lazy people not wanting to get it right, of a global conspiracy determined to make sure we can never see the world for what it truly is? No, it is a result of the world being round. But what does roundness have to do with correctness? Well, to find out, here's a little experiment you can try at home. All you need is a Sharpie, an easy peel orange, and your standard high school history textbook. On your orange, go ahead and draw a moderately accurate map of the world. 
it doesn't have to be perfect, just get the general shape of all the continents. Now, of course, to represent this world in a 2D plane, we're going to need to make it flat. As you can see, it doesn't really keep its proportions well anymore. In fact, if we tried to put this back in our U.S. history textbook, it wouldn't seem very accurate. Truly riveting stuff. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. Join us next time as we talk about America before, during, and after Columbus. After that, we'll be covering globalism and how we're all a little bit more connected even in a world where we can't physically be near each other anymore. If you would like to see more low-budget history, please let me know in the comments below, or just drop a note off in my classroom, and we can make more of these. If you are not interested in seeing more of these, please let me know, and I don't have to make more of these. I'm Mr. Thompson, this is Cedric the Skull, this is Greenland, and we will see you next time.